So here's another example where we're going to try to eliminate the parameter t and recover a rectangular equation uh, from parametric equations for some curve. Now, um, what we're going to do here is, I mean, because maybe it's not at all clear how to proceed, right? Um, should you solve for t? Like in the last one, we tried to like solve for t in one equation and plug it into the other. Um, but I mean, we have sines and cosines. We really want to get inverse trig functions into the picture? Maybe. Um, but what we might want to make use of here is, is remind ourselves that we always have identities to fall back on. And of course, we have this very fundamental Pythagorean identity, cos squared t plus sine squared t. We know that's equal to 1. OK, so maybe rather than trying to solve for t, solve this for cos t, solve that for sine t. And that's actually pretty straightforward, right? Um, from the equation for x, what do we get? We get that cosine of t is subtract 3 x minus 3, then divide by 4. And from the equation for y, sine of t, subtract 1, y minus 1, divide by 2, y minus 1 over 2. Well, now we just use the identity and we're done. x minus 3 squared over 4 squared plus y minus 1 squared over 2 squared is equal to 1. And we recognize that as the standard equation for an ellipse centered at the point 3, 1 um, with a semi-major axis of length 4 and a semi-minor axis of length 2. Right? OK, easy enough. We could plot it if we want. Um, point of the problem is not to plot the ellipse, just to come up with the equation. Um, so typically, you would find this, right? If you, if you want to, and you want to go the other way as well, right? If you have an ellipse and you want to parameterize your ellipse, you're going to do it like this, using trig functions, right? Um, you're going to, you know, you want this to come out to be essentially cos squared, and you can work the other direction and figure out what x has to be. You can figure out what y has to be. Two-way street. Um, you could treat hyperbolas similarly. Um, textbook mentions that for a hyperbola, you know, you can you, you think about kind of, you know, a basic equation for a hyperbola, so something like, like x squared over, over a squared, y squared over b squared is equal to 1. And you try to think about, well, do we know trig functions that satisfy that equation? And yeah, we do, right? So the textbook gives, gives this one. They say, okay, well, we could, you know, we could exploit the fact that secant squared t minus tan squared t is equal to 1 exploit that identity as one means of parameterizing a hyperbola. Um, those of you who did hyperbolic functions, of course, you know another way to parameterize the hyperbola. You could also exploit the fact that hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine, they satisfy that same identity, right? Um, and of course, when we introduced the hyperbolic trig functions, we mentioned, well, they really just come from looking at coordinates on sort of a standard hyperbola. Um, so we can finally sort of make that connection. Uh, the one thing you do have to be careful about if you want to use the hyperbolic functions to parameterize a hyperbola is the hyperbolic cosine function is always positive, right? Uh, so you're only going to get kind of the positive x half, right, of the hyperbola. And so for the other half, you have to let x equal to minus hyperbolic cos t, right? So you need two different parameterizations for the two sides of the curve which sort of makes sense if you think about it.